Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's a video game podcast. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. And my name is Ashton. Good morning, everybody. Good Hello. Good morning. How are you doing? All right. Good. Yeah. Yeah. How are yeah. you? How yeah, are you? I'm good. You good? good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good. We will. I think it smells nice outside today. It smells of oh, sort of air, you air. know, just fresh air. That's That makes for a nice change. Yeah. Mm. It's been smelling like rain the last mm. few weeks. Well, I think rain smells nice as well, but when it rains consistently you can't even smell the rain because it's all just wet mm. but you know it just sort of, it's it smelled of, of morning this morning oh, I thought. Yeah. nice yeah That's someone lovely. commented on last week's podcast being like why are peter and ashton dressed for winter because we're both wearing jumpers when yeah. it's august uh, and what people don't seem to understand mm. is that this year we have not had a summer we have had rain mm-hmm. rain mm. and more rain yeah. and i think the maximum temperature we've had over the like July and August so far is like 21 degrees. Yeah. We did have a uh, couple raining. of hot weekends. But, but that, that was in, way like back in like May, May and June. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 we went to the beach yeah. a few times in like May. Oh yeah, and that was really warm. And that was nice. But um, yeah, since nothing then, nothing in July. Nothing. August, nothing. August. I mean, today it's meant to get to, uh, it doesn't say on that PC, it was like 21 degrees is what it was telling me. And yeah. I don't I don't believe it. I don't believe it either. For a second. But I came into the office this morning and the aircon was on blasting cold it was chilly it's a bit cold in the office yeah it's meant to be a high of 23 today Mm. and cloudy all day and then it's gonna rain tonight Mm. brilliant goody love rain uh i've just been wearing my jacket indoors all week because it's just it's just been a bit cold and it's comfortable to wear jackets indoors at the moment Mm -hmm. because you just can't escape the badness Mm -hmm. uh this is not a weather podcast though guys this is a video game podcast. Yeah. Each and every week, we're sponsored by a very real video game adjacent sponsor. They help us keep the lights on here. Uh, still no Dead Island 2, the spider in here, I don't think. Well, him and, all of his, him and all of his babies have disappeared from the toilet Ooh, next door. Where dispersed have into they the building. gone? I don't, where I don't, have they gone? Every time I go in, I like check around to see if they're like in any, pl- any place where any part of my skin is going to touch. Mm-hmm. In the toilet. Uh, in the toilet. I check everywhere because they've all disappeared now and I don't know where they've gone. They'll show up when you need them most. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As, yeah. As is their want. Just like Spider-Man. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Spider-Them are everywhere. They yeah, are. Under the toilet seat. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a sponsor this week, Peter. I think you've got it written down there. I have. Um, hey, do you know what I flipping hate? What? What? Did you, did you, did you just look at the sponsor no, there, actually? I don't know. Good. Good. Uh, do you know what I flipping hate? What do what? you hate? Um, non-fungible tokens. Non-fungible tokens. Oh, right, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah you know, too. like board chimp digital art and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. They're a Scroogeal. We don't Dri- know what they a scru- are. Yeah, they're a Scroogeal. Uh, it drives me insane. Mm. I get really cross about it. Well, there's a game coming out um, like next week or something by EA Sports all about that. That's right. Maddening NFT 24 is coming next week. Cool. Maddening NFT. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that anything to do with a sport? Because EA like to make sport games. It does sound a bit like their other series, Madden NFL 24. But it's not But that. it's nothing to do with that, actually. Oh, okay. Um, okay. What do you do in it? Yeah. Uh, you just uh, go on, on social media and see people with hexagonal profile pictures oh. and go, flip. Stop it. That's so hey, maddening. Those guys. Yeah. So I've been... Playing, we've all been playing yeah, that game for free. For a yeah, while. It's like a sim game, though. Like, so oh, you, right. you, we've been playing it in real life. We've been living that, right? But which isn't in, fun. Whereas this will be fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And in the game, your character walks over to a desk, sits down, and then it's full screen of a social media platform. So it's Brilliant. almost as real as just having the actual social media platform on your full screen, anyway. Mm. Okay. But you know that actually sitting in front of that, there's a virtual character going. Oh, I'm so cross. Okay. So it's it, a really immersive sim game. So did, cool. like, is this game pro or anti-NFT? Uh, it's anti-NFT. Okay. Because they're maddening NFTs. And you right. are so cross that people have got their, you know, they probably have Bitcoin as well um, or Dogecoin. Mm. Probably and, Dogecoin. Uh, yeah, they're, you, they're it feels like you're sort of drawing... The game would draw attention and promote NFTs, though, even mm. if it's anti-NFT. Yeah. Well, it just maybe it's made by EA. Maybe there's though. lots of like microtransactions, so that'll put you oh, off. Right. Oh, maybe. Yeah, okay. I don't know. It's also maddening. Um, yeah. Maybe the reason that there is some confusion over okay. the messaging yeah. here is because it's not real. Oh, oh man! But it is so real the forward. way I feel when I scroll through the internet yeah. and see them. I, I do get maddening. Looking at that in my leisure time, I was I was so excited. No, we're not sponsored by. Maddening NFT mm, 24. 24. 24. Mm. We're sponsored by our wonderful patrons over at patreon.com, where for uh, at any tier, 
you can support us. That was a weird sentence, wasn't it? We're for you, any tier. We're for any tier. You can support us and you help us keep the lights on here legitimately. And uh, you're basically just supporting the things that you enjoy. And that means a lot to us and lets us do all sorts of stuff. Plus, you get loads of rewards as well, depending on which tier you go for, including... Submitting po- questions to this podcast. Submitting questions to this podcast. Worst games ever. Early. Two days before yeah. everyone else. Weirdest games ever. A week before everyone else. More rewards coming soon. Hopefully, we'll let mm-hmm. you know in due course. Yeah. So go to patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. Those are the true sponsors of this podcast, our lovely patrons. A little bit of housekeeping uh, before we move on. There is a video on the channel this week, Ashton Matthews. There is. It is a weirdest games ever week. If you're a patron, you would have already seen this last week. But hey, why not watch it again on YouTube? Why not watch it again? Why not? Uh, it's called Stupid Invaders, the game is. And uh, I'm talking like you now. Yeah. Uh, Yoda. And it's a pretty good one, I would say. It's, bit, it's very weird. Where he said monkey with diarrhea. That was really yeah. funny. That was so that funny. That was so really funny. funny. And you that. can watch that on YouTube. Yeah. tomorrow mm-hmm. at the yeah. time of the release of this podcast you can also go to our shop triplejumpshop.com buy some merch there and go to our website triplejumpmp oh it's so shiny and new and looks mm. fantastic and you'll find links to all of our stuff there the youtube the twitch the discord the cameo all of that stuff so go over there triplejumpmp time for our first question it is it's from nikki p who says hello bap i don't know about you but i'm feeling 22 and mm. I'm also mm. vibing with Torgal. Did I say that right, Ashton? Vibing. Yep. I'm vibing oh, with... Oh, I thought it was Vibong. Vibbing uh, with Torgal or Torgal. 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 The wolf pet slash companion in Final Fantasy XBI. That's 16. Yes. Thank you. He protect, he attack, but most importantly, he gets pats. Yes. Who is your favorite companion video game animal friend? Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, mm. Nikki. Thank you, Nikki. Um, the first thing I wrote was not Trico. Um, from The Last Guardian. That's yeah. possibly my least favorite Yeah, video he's game really animal. annoying. Um, he doesn't do what you want him to do. No. Oh, but it's like it's like real life. Like, you know, your dog won't always do what... No. All right, then. Why in the game is there not a button where I have to go and, like, piss against a tree <laughs> every three hours? Or, you know, X to breathe in, square to breathe out. Realistic, right? No. Poorly coded. Poorly coded. Bad animal. It was the USP of that game as well, and it was badly done. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have got some actual answers, though. <laughs> okay. Obligatory mention of Sparks the Dragonfly. Sure. If yeah. I'd not had him through my childhood, I would have had to walk up to every gem manually and touch <sighs> it. It's the worst when, when Sparks is dead because yeah. you've been playing poorly. You mm-hmm. know? Yeah, hate it. Terrible. Um, but really, I think my favorite video game animal companion that I can think of i was struggling really but um dog meat mm, i like dog meat one. he's just so he's a good boy he looks so happy all the time mm-hmm. and he he is happy to just be your friend and, and do walk, what into, you traps and walk into traps mm-hmm. and set up mines yeah mm-hmm. and uh you know it, it, i like to think somehow that it's always the same dog meat across all of the fallout games it in is which dog meat appears it has, it he's like a sen- it has to he's be. like a kind of a a deity yeah yeah yeah, yeah he is mm-hmm. um so those are my answers. Not Trico is the main one. Ashton? <laughs> I have a, I have one, but I don't know if it technically counts as an animal because I don't think it's an anim- they're animals, but it's the rots from Cana Bridge oh, Spirits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're yeah. not animals, but what are they? Don't know. Just we're all animals. little dudes. Really. Stuffed toys. Little dudes you can put hats on. Yeah. Uh, and the minute I saw them in the trailers, I was smitten. And then I was even more smitten when I played the game and I could put little hats on them and they would just run around with me and I had like one that was a fox and one that was wearing a little helmet. It was just, I love them. They're so cute. And they make me happy whenever I see them. Mm -hmm. And then they also look like my cat um, because they are all black, just like my cat is. Big coal eyes. Uh, Yeah. So yeah, I love the rots. I don't remember them being particularly helpful. Well, actually, they do turn into a big slug, don't they? In the game. Oh, yeah, they do. They become they become big slug. A big sort of dragon thing. Yeah, mm. and then they attack enemies for you as well. So that's I can't good. Remember now. Yeah. And I don't remember if they, like, pick things up, like Pikmin. I don't know if they do. I think maybe they just... It's been a long time. I was trying to remember what, what it is that they do actually do. Do yeah. you just rescue you, them? You or collect them. Well, you, you yeah. collect them and they wear hats. Did and they then... do stuff in the puzzles, though? Did they, like... <sighs> maybe. Open doors and stuff? I don't really remember, but I just like having them around. Yeah. They're just great to be. They're just good friends. With. Yeah, mm. exactly. Just reliable pals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Controversial opinion. Mm. Not too fussed about Toggle. No, no. It's cool to have a dog friend there mm. all the time, but like, 
I don't think he's that helpful in combat. Um, he does some cool story stuff, and there's a great line uh, that one of the characters says that I shared on Twitter the other day, where Torgal, something happens to Torgal, and he says, oh, don't worry about Torgal, but why? This very morn he had his nose buried in my nuts. Oh, yeah. Which is great. And the <laughs> delivery of the line as well. The nuts is <laughs> Anyone who's played the game will know that line mm -hmm. uh, because it just comes out of nowhere. And I enjoyed that. But he he often doesn't accompany you. Like when you're back at the, the base area, he's not walking around with you. And when you're going to certain settlements, he's not there. So there's large portions of the game where like I'm not even really aware that he's even with me mm. until I'm in battle and I see him just zoom past <laughs> and bite someone. And yes, you can pet Torgal, and that's great. And I'm not really sure what they could have done to really endear Torgal to me even more than they have, because lots of people love Torgal, but I, I could take Torgal, I'd miss Torgal if Torgal was gone. Mm. I'm not too fussed about Torgal, Torgal's all Would right. Would you be happier if Torgal was a cat? Like a panther thing? Mm. I mean, my actual answer may well back that up, okay. potentially. But I think Red 13 wasn't a pet, but was far better in Final <laughs> Fantasy VII. That's a sentient human being. Though. He is technically a companion not video human. game friend. Animal friend. Yeah. 30, red 13. Yeah. yeah. I suppose Nanaki. Yeah. 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 Just because he's sentient doesn't mean he's not an animal. Well, yeah. he's my friend. Mm. Like Goofy is technically an animal. He's my friend. best friend. But then he? what is Pluto, you know? That's where the questions become. An affront to God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put him out of his misery. Yeah. Uh, my choice is actually a slightly uh, weird one because I used to go around to my friend's house who had a World of Warcraft subscription. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would play World of Warcraft and usually create a new character every single time right. I went around. And I liked to play as a dwarven hunter, which meant that you could charm certain creatures to become a friend, a little pet. Mm -hmm. And then you could command that pet and that pet would level up. And I always went for a snow leopard because they're cool. Mm -hmm. And so I always had a little snow leopard companion. I think I probably called it Snowy, something mm. really uninventive, or... Leper. Leppy, leper, <laughs> snowy leppy. Uh, and and that that's my favorite one. Can't even remember the, the name of it, but that snow leopard that I would always persuade to to kill things for me, including fellow snow leopards oh in God. World of Warcraft. That was That was my favorite animal. You've reminded me of a very, very similar pet that I had in a okay. similar game. I had Guild Wars, which is mm. free to play, so I didn't have to pay a subscription. Neither did I. And, well, no. <laughs> and um, uh, I was, I used to choose, like, ranger, hunter, man, whatever mm -hmm. it was that could charm animals. And I had a... Uh, not a snow leopard. It was like more like... It was like a mountain lion, I think. Okay. Mm. And that was called Maul. No Star Maul. Wars influence there. Wow. Maul as in what... a leopard would do to you yeah maul you it would yeah. maul you he was okay. called maul which i thought was pretty cool wow um, and he would you know kill all the goblins and stuff mm -hmm. and uh i loved him very much hmm. i'd forgotten all about him go and get him That's he's still waiting for you on yeah, a server yeah. somewhere waiting, yeah Papa. my runescape character still has i think at least two cats in the bank hmm. because they're i think they were members only at that time you could only get a cat if you were a member and all it would do is just like toddle along after you mm -hmm. and follow you about uh, but when you're a, a, a scrub, you, you're not allowed to use your cat anymore. So it's just it's just an item. Oh, so sad. it's just in the bank and has been in the bank for about 12 years. My, my DS still has my Nintendogs on them. Mm. Oh my God. And I feel bad for them, but they never responded to me anyway. They're rubbish. Nintendogs I had two, is rubbish. I had a Chihuahua called Bob and then I had a Yorkshire Terrier and I can't remember what I called that, that dog. But I remember the Chihuahua called Bob because I remember being in a car journey and just shouting Bob into my DS. Bob. And my mum was like, can you just give it a rest? Can you play something else? Is it like when I was trying to do the launch video for the yeah. 3DS? And, and I was trying just, to use the And we were all sat dog. quietly and just Ben just kept going, dog. It <laughs> wouldn't listen. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't I work. Uh, that's Nintendo Dogs is one that completely passed me by. But I tell mm. you what, people went crazy for Nintendo. I went crazy for Nintendo Dogs. Just get a dog. Yeah. Wasn't allowed one. Just get a just dog. Bob you weren't allowed a virtual dog either. He didn't want to play with no, you. No, he didn't want to play it's with It's very me. sad. Yeah. It's time to do a section what we have never done before. Mm. I can't read it because it's in a language I don't understand. Oh, but luckily I do. Okay. I've written it in woman. Ooh. Go on, uh, then, woman. It is called What We Play In. Oh, that's not what that says. It's, what was it? 
what what we what we, we play, play in. W-P. Sorry. I'm yeah. still learning woman. Ashton what is women trying to play in. teach me. What women play What women are playing. Well, first yeah. I'm going to ask what man play in. Yeah. That being you. What are you okay. playing, Pia? Played a couple of things this week. I have mostly, well, exclusively at home, been continuing with um, Crash Bandicoot 4. Mm. And last night I was getting really, really pissed off. <laughs> I've had a really good time with it so far. And uh, definitely, as I've, I've said, I think the past couple of times I mentioned it, I've been doing a lot better than I did the first time I played it. But... Um, there are the so you go through the game in a linear fashion, one level after the next. Um, but in the levels, you can find these little VHS tapes um, as you go, and when you get those, you can play through the in context. You're like watching the tape playback, and it's a, a video that was taken of Crash in 1996 or whatever when he was a, a young Bandicoot when he was still an experiment, and he's doing all these tests in the lab. Um, and I really like those. And I can't, I feel like I'm not moving on to the next level of the main game until I found the tape from that level and played through that. What you have to do though, is get to the tape, the location of the tape in one life. You're not allowed to die, otherwise it disappears. So I was restarting over and over again. I'm about three levels from the end of the game where things get really, really hard. And I was just struggling to get to the tape (laughs) in one go. And getting angrier and angrier. Um, I've, I've never been a controller thrower, but I'm a, sometimes I'm a sofa puncher. Okay. I don't get up and turn around oh, yeah. and punch it. I'll like punch it. Yeah. Just, yeah, just do yeah, a yeah, thumb. Yeah, yeah. You never sake. know when you might yeah. need that. Um, but it's mostly my fault. The game's pretty tight. Like, the controls are tight. So it's it's normally me just being impatient. But, Skill um, issue. Skill yeah, issue. exactly. User error. Um, Sounds like a crap game to me. <laughs> yeah, rubbish. Uh, so I've been having mostly a really good time with that, apart from last night towards mm. the end of my session. But also... Uh, since the last podcast, I have played at an arcade. Um, what? What? We uh, without us, your yeah, friends. That's right. What is that? What the heck? Some family came up to visit on the weekend, and we went to. Um, it's not called Ghetto Golf anymore. It's called Golf Fang or something. Oh. Or Fang oh. Golf. Fang. Yeah, Golf Fang. I think. Oh. But it's still Ghetto Golf. Okay. It's exactly the same. All the tracks i was gonna say all the tracks are still there <laughs> yes. yeah including yeah. the jeremy kyle the set, courses which is no longer on tv jeremy kyle but mm. um they have some arcades there some arcade cabinets so i played house of the dead something four i think it was nice, nice. and ms pac-man ms. Mm. we don't comment on her marital status she is ms pac-man yeah. mm-hmm. don't worry about it um so that was fun i had a good time playing some arcade games and i, I always whenever i go to an arcade i feel like I should do this more often. Yeah. And then I don't ever go back. Because to they're one. not conveniently they're located. Too and they cost too much money. I only yeah. go to them when I'm already there. You know, mm. I'm doing yeah. something else or I'm in town. I've gone out for food. And it's like, oh, there's the arcade just across there. All right, let's go in mm. or at the seaside. But I would yes. never go out of my way to just go and play some, some arcade games. But yeah, mm. I had a really good time with that. Um, I like some House of the Dead. Nice. Don't know the difference between any of them. You do. You're quite familiar, aren't you, with House of the Dead? House of the Dead. Well, I mean, House of the Dead 4 is the one that has the Uzi. Right. House of the Dead. It was probably two or three that you were playing. Is that the one yeah, with help? We've got to control the something in the city. Yes. With the really, that's probably uh, one or two. Oh, one, right. I think. I thought it was one of the sequels, but maybe not. I don't know. Mm. Um, if you're going through the the little town, you go through the church and mm-hmm. stuff. I think that, that one was on Dreamcast. I know that much. So he's, right. he's such a professional. House he of the is. Dead nerd. I mean, not really. Just I have a passing knowledge and I really enjoy the voice acting in all of them. Mm-hmm. So yeah. They yeah. are all incredible voice acting. Ashton, what have you been playing? I played two things this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I rolled credits on Pikmin 4. Nice. But then there's like probably another like four hours of game after that. Um, but my Switch was stolen by my boyfriend. Oh. <laughs> I swear everyone's you can't say that in my presence. Sorry, the yeah, victim of an bike actual actually theft recently. Stolen. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. So sorry. I'm not I thought for a second I was like, oh my God, your Switch No, it didn't get stolen. stolen. My boyfriend has Liberated. been away this week and he took it with him. Mm. And, he was, and I was like, oh. I'm, I want to play Pikmin. And he was like, well, I'm going to be on my own. And then I was like, oh, fine. That's true. You Whatever. I, yeah, maybe I have a PC and also have a PlayStation. I, I wanted the Switch. He does Switch. have his magic um, PSP as well. He does have his magic PSP Beta, and yeah. a... A controller that you can connect to his phone and all kinds of and things. And a little adapter that's little like adapt- a, a little dock thing. It's amazing yeah. for the Switch. Wow, yeah. Or just digging Very out MB now. Yeah, he's got so much stuff. He's got cool things. He's I got wasn't cool th- things. I wasn't having a go. I think it's impressive. Yeah, I do. I just don't travel as I don't need it. 
Mm. No, the, <laughs> the size of his backpack is just, it's just full <laughs> of just, just random bits of, of gaming straight. stuff. And, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, a four, pa- four full pairs of, of trousers for four days, and then also a bunch. Four, but hang on, he right now we, need to, now we need to dig into many trousers. <laughs> How many pairs of trousers? He put he backed four pairs of trousers. That's ludicrous. Plus that a pair of pajama trousers, plus a pair of tracksuit bottoms for like four Man days. Wants to be clean and comfy. What's he, he doing? He's just working in an office. Pissing his pants all day. <laughs> I know, exactly. Well, it's six p.m. Time to clock off and, and <laughs> poo my, my pants. pants. <laughs> yeah. So while he's been away with my Pikmin four. Switch. Um, mm. I have been playing Spirit Farer. I started playing Talos Principle, but then I was like, nope, can't be asked. Uh, that's too much work. I couldn't figure out one puzzle and then I turned the game off because um, I was like, I can't do this today. And then I got into Spirit Farer, which I've been really enjoying. Uh, hang out with my cat Daffodil is the name of the cat. Uh, that's just Were your real name. cats jealous? Uh, no, they are just raging to go outside all the time. So right, okay. why was your okay. answer to question one not daffodil? Well, because I wanted like to talk. Cat. Well, I was thinking about that, but then I thought, well, I'll talk about Spirit Farin. Don't really know how she feels about daffodil yet. No, it's I mean daffodil soon. is very cute, and but every time it makes cat noises, I think it's my cat making mm. a noise. Sometimes it'll squeak, and I'll be looking around like. What's wrong, <laughs> child? Where are you? And it turns out they're not even in the house. They've gone. And it's just the cat on the TV making uh, squeaky sounds. Mm. Um, but I'm really enjoying Spirit Farer. I like um, building my boat. I'm a bit confused by what I'm supposed to be doing at the moment, but that's just because I think I've just got myself all spun around. Um, I played it for like an hour last night, and then I was too tired to carry on. But I've been playing it pretty much every day this week, and I've been enjoying it. Um, it's a little management sim on a boat, if you don't know what it is, and you're helping spirits get from where they start to crossing over into the afterlife. But they all want to hang around. Just like and, Yeah. Mm. And they want you to like build them houses and stuff. And then once you've built their houses, you can't then unbuild their house, even when they've crossed over to the other side. So I've just got a bunch of these empty houses that oh, I can't get rid of. Sad. So um, I have to keep buying a bigger boat. We're going to need a bigger boat mm-hmm. uh, to put more houses on for people who want to live on my boat. So... Duh. Yeah, but I'm enjoying it nonetheless. Uh, even when they quick, the people will say, I'm so hungry, and then turn around and give me a bunch of cooked food and be like, here, share this around, but I'm so hungry. And I'm like, okay, well, you, why did you give me this food then? Eat it yourself. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying that game. That's what I played this Good. Is it, what's that on? Uh, PlayStation 5. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I installed like a bunch of games a little while ago when I was kind of like, I don't know what to play. Mm. So I've got like maybe for like four or five games that I've kind of dipped into that I haven't finished. I still haven't finished it on a two. I haven't finished Talos Principle. Um, I've have, I'm probably not going to finish Spirit Spiritfarer. Um, and also I finished a book this week, but <gasps> but I'm not, I've not picked up the third one. So still? Was it the sequel to the... I fin- Yeah, I finished mm. the sequel and then uh, now I'm over it. Right. I don't want to read books anymore. You don't want to... Well, the issue is that I haven't bought the third one. And then because I haven't immediately bought the third one and jumped into it, I'm now not interested anymore. Right. Okay. You're going to forget everything. Well, it's come while it lasted. Yeah. That's very impressive. You read two books this year. Thank you. I did read two books. That's more than I anticipated. Yeah. Yeah. So... Sick. That's Mm. cool as hell. Thank you. Um, I went to Wales and I took my PlayStation and I was there with some friends and we were playing some games together. So I've got a selection of things that were played with friends and on my own. And most of it was Jackbox. Played a lot of different Jackbox packs just Mm -hmm. for like four hours in a row. Just loads and loads of Jackbox. Some of those games are rubbish, especially in the latest pack. Some of those latest pack, like uh, nine. Mm. There's a few in there that are just like... God, they're boring. They're yeah. just not. They're just not fun at all. They're not funny or interesting. Um, I find that about most packs, though. There's always like at least one that's like just crap. Yeah. Mm. There's like one. I can't remember what pack it's on. Where it's like a little. You play as a little dude, and you're like zipping around the screen, and it's not like a. It's like an actual game game, right. and you're like trying to. I don't know. Throw balls around or something. I can't remember what it is, but there's one that's just not. It's just not good. Mm. We played one. It's the one where you have to do the order of things, like on a on a timeline. So you you'll be given you split off into teams. You'll be given different prompts, or there it'll be oh, like oh yes yeah 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 uh, order of release of these songs, yeah. for example. And I you have to drop one. it down on that. You don't know what's coming next. I don't mind that one. That one's not too bad. However, even though I had the option on to filter US centric content, mm. there was one that we did that was. 
uh, from most calorific to least calorific, and it was just American foods. Good. Right. And we didn't know what half of them were. It's and called, the other half we only we only knew about because of, you know, television and mm, stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's called Quick Quizort. Quizort. Yeah, with an X. Quicksort. Mm. Quicksort. Yeah, there we are. That yeah. makes sense. Uh, so that, that was fine. Played a little bit of Loco Roco, still just jumping to the end rolling. of the stage, yeah. rolling, breaking up into bits. Being having, squishy. Being mm. squishy, having bits of me stolen, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, did a playthrough of Little Hope, the, the Dark Pictures anthology, oh, yeah. Little Hope, because uh, one of the people that we were there with had not played it before. And that was fun. We actually managed to keep everybody alive oh. mm. until the very end where one where the game just decided, oh, well, unfortunately, uh, because you played this character as a rude horrible person this was angela mm. you know who's rude and horrible anyway yeah and because you decided to play her the way that she is uh we're just gonna kill her so right. it wasn't about failing a quick time event it was right at the end of the game oh unfortunately you're still horrible so you're just gonna die now oh. and that felt like uh was a it like people just off. didn't save Did, her yeah someone just not what? choose to, no 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 like we we all we were all helping each other out and we were succeeding at every single no quick as in time like did, did the game say like oh because they don't like you they're not going to help you it wasn't that it was that she hadn't the rest of them uh, i got a trophy for uh saving them or like the they escaped their past or something i think because she she maintained her nastiness because mm. she what i did you know she, we did choose to save her several times like physically like go back and help her yeah but because she she didn't have a change of heart as it were right she basically succumbed to the same demons that she always had or yeah. some wonky excuse like right. that and then we just had to watch as she just got killed suddenly for oh, no reason okay. it was a, That's fun. great well good 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 to know that it's not just about playing well it's about choosing dialogue the right dialogue options mm. as well so. that's what dr Reynolds hill would say yeah. it is what it's not he would just say. about playing well it's about Ooh. being a nice boy it was good to see him again mm. and mm -hmm. his amazing uh, intro music which i love and yeah. i'm very sad that we're not getting a dark pictures anthology game this year mm. it's very sad indeed uh, i played some more final fantasy 16 and i did a big epic fight and that was super fun and i hopefully hopefully getting back on track now to just like play that more regularly and finish that off but i am still enjoying it and i played flipping loads of Diablo 4 because mm. I have been exhausted and that is a good game for that uh, and that's everything that I've played amazing mm. now it's time I think that we head over to the coziest corner of all it's review corner time <laughs> oh <laughs> Here we are in review corner. It's oh. me and James Jenkins. Hello. Hello. I'm here again. How are you You're, doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Uh, Good. What are you going to tell me about today? Oh, been playing that game. What everyone's talking about? Baldur's Gate Free. The bear one. The one with the bear. <laughs> yes, you can romance a bear. Wine and dine and ursine, which I was yeah. very pleased with. Uh, my <laughs> uh, tweeting the other day, but yes, yeah, so a Baldur's Gate Free. Um, First of all, I, I should remember this time to say like thank you very much uh, to Larian Studios for mm. providing us code. Um, and yeah, oh boy, this game is good. It's very, is it? Very good. Enjoying it. Yeah. So for um, those who don't, because some there might be some people listening who don't know what a Baldur's Gate is as, mm, a, as a game. Uh, yeah. What, give us uh, an overview of the genre and the gameplay first. Of course. So um, yeah. So this is uh, an RPG. This is a real beefy uh, CRPG. Um, that sort of, I believe the C stands for like computer. Weirdly, it's a very outdated term. But anyway, it's that sort of. Before, yeah, actually. it's like just your sort of like overhead viewpoint yeah. of RPG yeah. sort of. Uh, flavor. Um, it's set in a D&D &D world uh, with all the D&D &D rules. It's um, you know, kind of a, a long-awaited follow-up that people didn't really expect until it was um, announced a few years ago um, to the original games that were, you know, the first Baldur's Gate from 1998, mm -hmm. uh, sequel follow-up in, in 2000, but uh, this obviously not from Bioware, it's from uh, uh, Larian Studios who did Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2, which oh. were Again, that sort of CRPG style, so like the overhead, um, a lot of like um, RPG sort of choices and whatnot, but also turn-based combat and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, this game, a lot of people who are familiar will probably have already played it in early access because it's been out since 2020 and they've been slowly sort of building stuff up right. uh, from there. 
Um, and then, you know, a lot of this hype, typically you'd see sort of early access games, you know, uh, maybe not do so well on their, you know, version one proper mm. release. Yeah. Um, this one amazingly has just, you know, blown all expectations out of the water and um, rightfully so, I think. Um, it's genuinely, it feels like such a good RPG. Like it's one of the best RPGs that I have experienced. It's nice. insane. Yeah. yeah. So uh, a lot of fun there. Um, a lot of D&D thing. Uh, um, and yeah, with with my, I mean, I have quite limited knowledge of D&D. I don't know do you, right. yeah, if you have much experience. With I happen D &D, to be aware of yeah. the, the actual world because it's yeah. in Forgotten Realms, isn't it? Which is a specific yes. branch of D&D. Yeah. I only know that because I played the Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance spin-off oh, games. Oh, of course. Yeah. Which yeah. are yeah. similarly, they're like, mm somewhere between kind of top down and third person they almost yeah. feel like third person because they're quite zoomed in or they can be but um yeah it's the top down yeah. hack and slash kind of stuff more but, sort of actiony yeah, yeah it was more action focused mm. compared to the, the other rpgs ah very cool but yeah that's uh, all i really know about yeah. the D, D world well i uh, yeah same i'm i'm a D, &D noob essentially you know uh, done a, a couple of sort of campaigns uh, yeah. a couple of you know one-off things sessions but um from my new, a limited knowledge, it does feel like one of the most sort of faithful recreations of like a D and D, um, just of the D and D vibes, like the freedom that that provides. One of the best sort of representations of that in a video game that I've seen, mm -hmm. um, just because like the choices available to you are, it's, it's absurd, and it's very, uh, it seems to be very faithfully recreated as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. So like the story and the world building, very in depth. Uh, there's there's a lot of combat mechanics that are sort of uh, translated well and, you know, maybe tweaked slightly to make it a bit more video gamey, but seem like they're in there. You know, you, you, you move, you take an action, you take a bonus action, and then you've right. got all plethora of different options. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think, I think the most important thing is like it, it just feels like it rewards like that sort of air, like that attitude of uh, problem solving, right? Yeah. And you can go about things in so many different ways, and it keeps not only throwing surprises at you in terms of like your know, story and things that you can find, mm. but also what you think you can get away with, and then you find out, oh my god, you can actually do that. Yeah, I saw um, a bit of footage of it. It's and crazy. It reminded me a little bit of like those really early text-based adventures. Yeah. Uh, where you weirdly in those games, even though they were quite rudimentary, and like you know, we're talking like late eighties. Yeah. Sometimes you could type in like eat the goblin and it would just <laughs> let you do it and it's like oh yeah. okay that's allowed and that's the kind of vibe i was getting from mm. this like some of the choices people have seen like oh, making it's crazy is uh yeah it's it's really clever that they've done all that yeah yeah it's 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 phenomenal how they've managed to sort of cater to that and you know just just feel like i think um a lot of that is they've benefited from early access and they've, they've realized oh people want to try this mm. okay then here you go yeah. um but yeah i'll uh Sort of go into the, the nitty gritty. I've, I've written down quite a lot of notes here, but um, so like classes, you know, when you start off, obviously, um, big important thing for a big RPG, got to get your your character right. There are twelve main classes. Um, I think they they sort of fit into like your standard fifth edition rule book. Right, this is yeah. all fifth edition for for the for the D and D nerds out there. Um, uh, you get forty six subclasses tied to those uh, those main classes, and then you also you have the option to multi-class. You pick another main class, and I think you can just do that, you know, as many times as you want in place of leveling up your current one. So although your level limit is 12 and you, you know, don't level up super often through the game, uh, you have an insane amount of possibilities and combinations right. that you can do with that, um, which is crazy. You've also got like 11 races with further customization. Yeah, you got like yeah, humans, elves, half elves, dwarves, mm -hmm. you know, halflings, all that sort of stuff. And then your more D and D uh, specific, like you know, drow and tiefling. I didn't know what a gif yankee was, but I do now. They, I only know that yeah. from another video game, actually. Ah, there yeah. we go. Yeah. Demon Stone, not Demon Souls. Ooh, ooh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's like a Patrick Stewart game. Oh my god! Well, what? A Patrick Stewart. I mean, Patrick Stewart is in it. It's not that <laughs> yeah. Patrick Stewart. Yet, but... <laughs> Made by yeah. famed game creator. Also yeah. set in the Forgotten Realms, and it has Gith Yankee in it. But, oh wow! Yeah. yeah, that might be a Forgotten Realms specific thing. Then that's mm. interesting. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The 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 choices are insane. Anyway, so it's like for for people that are very 
big on like uh, a lot of choice in our RPGs, this is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, the yeah, a, a little bit on the character creator. Um, it. Again, it seems like pretty pretty well done. Like it could, this is very very maybe the only criticism I have right. so far of the game. It could be slightly better with like you know changing actual facial details and right. stuff specifically. Yeah. Um, you pick from like uh, just a selection of pre done heads, but then you can add like you know different eye colors, tattoos, scars, right, yeah, right. yada yada yada, a lot of different hair choices and all that sort of stuff. So it's pretty good still in that respect. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, in terms of like once you get uh, cracking into it like uh, story uh, you awaken as a captive on like a, a mind flayer ship so it, the start is very sort of cinematic and that's another thing that impressed me with like you know this typical sort of game you expect to be reading through lots of text mm. and the story to be presented in that sort of way this is very cinematic when it wants to be and mm. very um, very flashy and, and graphically very beautiful as well um so you awaken on a mind flare ship. You've got a nasty little mind tadpole shoved into your eye. This is, you know, spoilers, but it's literally the very first thing that happens. Okay. Um, and yeah, and basically you've got to, you know, you escape and you've got to figure out what to do with this problem because it is a problem. Right. Um, so yeah, you'll you'll find, you know, a lot of other stories, your typical sort of RPG thing, but it's not really like, a, again, it keeps... Throwing up surprises and nothing ever feels like it's a filler story. Everything feels like uh, well written, well mm-hmm. presented, um, and even like yeah, there, there's no sort of find ten of this sort of fetch quest. Yeah, right. There's always an interesting sort of story in there. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, the yeah again like the writing or sort of uh, the voice acting really really like uh, impressed me as well. Yeah. So it's. It, it feels like there's so many sort of old school elements to this in terms of like the format of the game, but they've made it so modernized with incredible voice acting, incredible like presentation. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, just just phenomenal. Um, combat. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, go well, on. I was just, <laughs> I was like, yeah. just about to say good <laughs> stuff. Is that was there anything else you wanted to talk about about combat? Uh, yeah. Oh, I've got so I'm gonna have to sort of blast through some of these details here because there's a it's a big game. There's a lot involved here, but um, yeah, I feel like uh, uh, so well. I should say really like uh, the choices again. I've made that kind of clear. Like um, it makes it feel like a proper RPG. You can do a lot of things that you know you wouldn't have expected in other games yeah. anyway. Um, but the other thing of making it sort of faithful to D&D, you can actually see the dice rolls, which is really cool. Right, okay, nice. So, um, yeah, they uh, they present that in quite a clear way. They don't sort of shy away from it, hide it behind some other things. Um, they make it very clear, like, hey, this is what you're doing, and you've got, like, these bonuses here, your skill bonuses, any optional extras you can put in. Very clearly shown. And, um, you know, for any for any non-D&D people as well, it's it's... Uh, it sort of streamlines, um, I think, using like uh, inspiration points. There's a system where you can re-roll if you uh, have a sort of inspiration points, and you get those points by doing things that are like, um, yeah, choices that sort of fit into your character's backstories and stuff. And and the same goes for your party members as well. Right. Um, so yeah, uh, and then sort of going into combat then as, as I was <laughs> going to say again it's all very in depth mm. it's quite a bit more complicated than what I was sort of expecting even from like I've played original Sin 1 and 2 um, but this is trying to fit in the D&D sort of system into that right but um, again like for UI it's it's a lot of first but a lot of the um, you know tool tips and everything there I feel like at least maybe it's just me I'm sort of like used to going through these sort of games but um the tooltips feel like they're clear enough um they provide enough information but they're still like uh not being too cluttered basically right. so everything is there to sort of explain to you once you sort of go through it yeah um yeah like I say the the sheer number of like skills and magic spells it's it's crazy you've got a lot of different things you can stealth through the game uh I should say so like uh the combat is is turn based but regular exploration you can sort of walk around freely right, yeah. uh you can switch on a turn based sort of mode whilst you're in um uh just a sort of overworld which can help with stealth as well but 
yeah, again, it's it's all tied into this idea of like just improvise. Mm. Um, find the best approach. You can take enemies by surprise, um, and like things like uh, you know e even basic things. So you've got your spells, you've got your class specific skills and whatnot. But you've got basic things that you wouldn't consider in a lot of games, like you know, pushing someone off a ledge, for example, or you know, towards another enemy, yeah. in order to get like an AOE or push them into an environmental hazard, um, jumping higher during combat to get like a um, high advantage. Uh, you can pick things up and throw them at enemies, and I'm a big fan of that. Hmm. Um, yeah, there's even like bonus feats to add damage to that. They've they've thought of everything basically. Right. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, um, again, like, uh, <laughs> I, I feel like I've, I've talked a lot about this. I just want to sort of, uh, without spoiling too much, mention some of the weird stuff because it does seem to, like, get that vibe of, you know, like a DD and d session where people will suggest silly stuff. Yeah. And they've lent into that as well. Right. Um, you have a skill called, like, animal, uh, speaking to animals or animal speech or whatever it is. You can speak to animals. Right. Um, I got into a fight with a squirrel at okay. one point. Uh, you might well have seen the clip on Twitter. Uh, it didn't end well for the squirrel. If you pick a certain option, you mm -hmm. can literally just boot it into a <laughs> cliffside. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've found treasure in, in hay bales after speaking to goats that are like, oh, they're constantly hiding treasure in my food. Right. Um, weird stuff like even stacking up boxes to a higher place. You're thinking, um, yeah, well, I'm just going to get a bit of treasure. That led to a whole new area. Right. Um, quite sizable. I've, I've spoken to like an ogre to, to become my friend. Nice. <laughs> and fight with us. It's all very silly stuff that they've thrown in, but matched quite well with like the, the more serious storytelling elements mm, as well yeah yeah i i don't want to go on too long but again like i just want to say you know the party members as well the intriguing backstories is very good there is a lot here if you like rpgs mm. and you know like maybe that sort of old school stuff even if you're not familiar with D, &D yeah absolutely worth checking this out any any other like thoughts or questions? Well, so no, I've rambled I, on. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was gonna. I was gonna say. Yeah. You know, how silly does it get? And uh, yeah, you know, I was gonna ask about the combat as well. But yeah, that's uh, that all mm. sounds good. De definitely intriguing for um, you know. I I guess like what I've I've seen people playing this game saying I've not played any Baldur's yeah. Gate before and I've not played any D and D before. Yeah. And I'm really enjoying it. So oh, it sounds like yeah. you know you're kind of agreeing with that and. Mm. It sounds like it's worth checking out. Yeah, for, uh, for almost everyone, really. No, it's, it's yeah, definitely worth it. If you're obviously, if you're you know not big into RPGs at all and don't yeah. like all the numbers, then it'll probably be quite scary. Sure, but, but. Um, it is well worth doing, even on like you know you can pick just uh, story difficulty mode, which is mm, yeah. you know simplifies combat and whatnot. Um, yeah, I uh, also it is also multiplayer, so well, I'm not sure if it's uh, split screen compatible for PC. That's um, uh, a different matter. But uh, you know, PS5 should be coming like early September. Xbox is happening eventually. Yeah. They're still trying to figure that out and to be de determined. But but yeah, um, so you can play it with your friends. Worth checking well. out. Yeah. Great. Well, um, thank you, James. Excellent. Thank thoughts. you very much. And uh, we will we'll catch you in the next time you're, you're doing a review corner. But for now, let's yeah, go well, back to the podcast. Honestly, I'm just going to be playing this for the next year. Well, yeah. <laughs> no more review corners for James. No, I'm for done. Year. See you later. Right. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Peter and James. <laughs> Thanks, Peter and James. Thanks, Peter and James. Thanks, Peter and James. Um, for that review corner. So now I have a question too, which comes from Dan Scott. Hello, Bash to Path, Path Tin. Yep. Uh, the Witcher season three has been and gone, and the general consensus for Henry Cavill's final foray as Geralt seems to be that it ended with a whimper, and things don't look too bright for the series with Superfan Cavill being replaced by Liam Hemsworth for season four. One of the many rumours for Cavill's departure is a showrunner's alleged disregard and contempt for the source material, which fans of The Witcher also believe to be the biggest reason for a la the lack of quality following a promising season one. The question is, my, my question is this, should future TV and film adaptations stick more stringently to the source material in order to heighten the chances of creating a quality product that the fans love, as seen with The Last of Us TV series, which, with a few exceptions, is a beat-for-beat -beat retelling of the story? Is it important for the cast or crew to have some kind of affinity with the IP with, with which they're involved, as Cavill did, or is there a scope for future series to successfully divert away from the source material and put their own spin on things? Love you all. Keys, keys. Thank you, Dan. Keys. 
Thank you, Dan. Have you watched anyone watch the Witcher's TV show? No. I watched the first two. Se- I didn't like the first series. I enjoyed the second series a bit more because it made a bit more sense chronologically mm. uh, in terms of how it was structured. And then I've just, to be honest, I've I've not been signed up to Netflix because uh, I was piggybacking off someone else's account. Me too. And then there was a big purge. Yeah. So I haven't even had the opportunity, but I have absolutely no interest in watching it. I'm just I'm just not fussed. No, right. I'm not a fancy gal, so I just wasn't really interested in it mm-hmm. anyway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've I've just not watched it because I'm not particularly into. Um, well, it's not that I'm not a fantasy gal because I I kind of am, but I don't know. I just wasn't that interested in in that. I think I saw I've seen. Uh, the trailers and stuff for the various seasons and it's it's come across and this might not be true but it's come across to me as though it's as much about like the the people and the relationships and maybe even the politics as it is about actually doing some monster hunting like it, mm. it comes across to me as though it's only like 33 percent monsters and if it was 80 percent monsters i'd be really down for that and there's not it. nearly enough witchery yeah exactly um so uh but Either way, I think I might be... I don't know if I'm in the minority here, but I think that a video game adaptation doesn't necessarily need to follow the original story to be good. Um, It could have even new characters in it and just be set in that universe, uh, or it could have the characters that you know and love, but it could you know, kind of subvert what you think is going to happen. I remember before The Last of Us came out, a lot of people were saying... Will this actually? Fo- we know that it's Joel and Ellie, but will this actually be the story that we know, or are they going to like do something crazy mm. and completely, you know, pull the rug from under us? Mm. Um, and I think all of those things can be good, as good as following the story directly. It all just comes down to how the show is actually produced. Um, so I don't think necessarily that specific aspect dictates the success of, or should dictate the quality of a show. But as I say, I might be in the minority, and maybe the stats just say that if you actually follow the the video game story, you're going to do better. I think what does help, though, probably, is if sort of the showrunners, like maybe the writer and the director, do have perhaps some kind of affinity for the IP. Um, in the case of The Witcher, I mean, some people seem to forget that the video games are based on a book series, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, yeah. techni- if you want to be, if you want to get, actually about this literary about this um you know it you could just argue to say well it should follow the books rather than the games um i don't know how close the games and the books are to each other but the tv series has a lot of source material it could uh borrow from so i don't know but yeah i think as long as the showrunners at least understand what the sort of the aesthetic and the themes are of a video game ip then it doesn't necessarily matter if the story follows the game itself. Mm. I think it's the same with every kind of adaptation in the sense like book to TV show or book to movie, you know, game to movie the same way. I think that there is an element of it where you have to please fans of Mm. the original source material. And then there's also the element of you have to be able to introduce an entire new selection of people to this story and i think that um things like the hunger games like movies people love them but fans of the book will always say oh i wish that they'd done this better i wish that this had been included they didn't include this same things with like harry potter and stuff when i watched harry potter my boyfriend he'd stop the movie every couple minutes to tell me that in the books this happened but it doesn't happen him (laughs) why don't you go change your trousers (laughs) piss boy um (laughs) i am poor ben Ben. he's all right um he's all right he's all right um, but also with like the vid- like video game adaptations, like The Last of Us, it mm. did such a good job of being able to introduce brand new people to the kind of world of The Last of Us. And it did change things. And I think the things that it did change worked really well for a TV show um, where maybe they wouldn't have worked as well in a video game. And I think that that's where you have to kind of also have the distinction of, well, it works in a video game, but would this work in a TV show or a movie? And normally the answer is no. Uh, you can't have a big long shooting segment or stealth bit that's going to take 45 minutes to get past because it's just going to be boring. So there should be space for creative freedom with these source materials and how much you want to do. Like I'm intrigued with the Last of Us series season two will take the story from 
this, the second game or not. Mm. Then they've already said that there will be some deviations from the the second game, um, which is great. I'm excited to see what they change about it because I've already. I think they could keep Joel alive. You think you, you think they will? I, th- I think they could. They I could. Think, I think they could severely hurt him so that he yeah, is. Yeah, but is it wouldn't not... have the same. No, it wouldn't. Because why would she go all feral? Mm. I, I I don't know. I feel like there's... if Joel's just got like a broken leg or something. You think he just he's worth too much to the show? I think Pe- Pedro, Pedro Pascal, Pascal is Pascal. even though he would still be there. In flat, we're going off on a tangent. Even yeah. though Pedro Pascal is, it would still be involved in the show through the flashbacks that are in the game. Mm. Yeah, he's he's too valuable, and also. Naughty Dog and by extension HBO then have to relive the backlash yep. to the game yeah. all over again. Yeah. But with an entire new bunch well, yeah, of people. Exactly. <laughs> who are just going to yeah. flip the table and exactly. get furious. Yeah. But then if they change it, there's probably going to be a different set of. Oh, absolutely. Because of yeah. they can't, questions. They can't yeah. win. No. They no. can't win. But um, there should be creative freedom, but there should also, like Peter say, be some kind, someone working on the, the, the show that has like some kind of loyalty to the original source material or who can, like Henry Cavill used to do, correct people if they are actively doing something wrong. Mm. If they're like making up something in law or if you know something like, well, in like 40, 40 years ago, there was a war. And uh, you're actually saying that it was 200 years ago, but that doesn't make sense because of this, this, and this that you've already established. That's just the job of the the writers and like the producers to know this information. So as long as someone involved does have some loyalty to the IP, I think that they should be allowed for creative freedom. And like you say, The Witch is an outstanding situation because it's based on the book, not the TV show, mm, not yeah. the game, sorry. So yeah, I mean, I've not watched it and I just haven't really heard anyone talk about it that much apart from the fact that Henry Cavill was leaving that's kind of the only mm, thing I've heard yeah. about it so it's doomed the TV yeah. show yeah. is doomed for yeah. sure uh, I think it's a I could see scope for both scenarios laid out by Dan here whether there's more uh, control given to people who had an, a hand in the original IP or if there's if there's less, in mm-hmm. fact, you know, they're, they're no one and they can just fly by the seat of their pants and do whatever they want. Because in the case of The Last of Us, at least, they had Neil Druckmann involved, who by yeah. all accounts is not an impossible man to work with. However, if you brought in, say, the writer of The Witcher books, who I understand is extremely litigious and just a bit cantankerous, mm-hmm. there would be headbuttings all the time. There would be creative differences all over the place and it might be a bit of a complete nightmare production you know it, it, it may just never come out mm-hmm. so there has to be give and take and there's probably a balance to be struck personally i think uh that there should be someone involved in the original ip present to advise and i imagine that's the case most of the time but you've got directors you've got writers you've got studios you've got budgets there are so many ways that this that things can change and twist and you know people drop out of projects and so on and so forth uh, the actors get involved and then they don't want to be involved anymore i think it's while there are there's definitely examples of it being done wrong i think more often than not sometimes it just doesn't work mm-hmm. and and you can't deciding how involved the original creator is in something doesn't necessarily decide how good it's going to turn out and as is the case with The Witcher, it's easy now that we've had a few seasons to look at it and go, well, you know, maybe this went wrong or this could have happened or Henry Cavill's not feeling like it's living up to the potential that he sees for it because he's Mm. a super fan. We don't know what it's like to be in there and be involved and or or what could have changed that from the from the very beginning, Uh, because TV and film production is so very different from from game development Mm. specifically that. So it just sometimes it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Do we know if the Halo TV That's show exactly what I'm follows right the now. game at all? And also Twisted well, Metal TV show. It doesn't no. follow the game. I'm trying to find it out. Because he three, takes four, his three. helmet off, doesn't he? And that was a big thing. Yeah. Like he should, mm. Master Chief would never do that. No, I know that it doesn't follow the, like the, the game at all. Mm. It's like a totally different story. Mm. I don't even know if it's meant to be sort of canonical, but just set like before the game or alongside the game. I or don't or think it's it is. like a whole just non-canon thing. Mm. But yeah, I guess it's not. But um, I'm just trying to find out if anyone from 343 or Microsoft actually had an input in that or if they just 
gave them the IP and said, do it. Same with the Twisted Metal TV show. I mean, what mm. what other TV shows? There's The Witcher, The Last of Us, Gran Halo. Gran Turismo. Is it Gran Turismo, films? that's the movie. Uncharted. Yeah. Uncharted, so good. Best movie ever. I love that. I'm uh, literally in a paper. thought about watching that last night. Yeah, I really want to rewatch it as well. Um, Maybe we should do a watch party at some Well, we point. tried to, but we, we all did, got too we, drunk we got halfway too drunk. through and got we bored. We ordered Papa John's and everything, and then, yeah, we gave up. But yeah, yeah. we should we should do that. We should yeah. give that a go. Um, but yeah, with the Halo series, I think that's a good case in point where um, well, it's it's not fair for me to say, really, because I've not watched it. But the reason I didn't watch it is because it didn't look very good in the trailer. <laughs> and I, I think if if you directly adapted the game, it mm. wouldn't have worked, as you say, Ashton. You can't just have shooting nonstop for like six episodes or twelve episodes. That you have to like add in, you know. To, well, other things. I don't even know what a you would do. A gay love story. A gay love story, yes, for example. finally. Um, so that, it wouldn't have worked directly, but you could have at least set it amongst that story yeah. and, you know, introduced other characters as well, like have some Marines in there or whatever. Um, and that could have worked. But equally, it could have worked to have a completely different story as they did. But ultimately, either one of those options only work if you then have like a good writer good showrunners yeah. a studio who are making the right decisions as well mm -hmm. like the you know the people at the top and preferably someone involved from the actual game who says this is how halo should be mm -hmm. and from the looks of the trailer it didn't appear that all of those boxes were ticked i don't know though it's not fair for me to say exactly but. we've still like we still come a long way though because as as unappealing yeah, as the halo show yeah. is to a lot of fans it's still Probably quite watchable. I think my dad least. really likes. You said it. your dad's apparently it. very. Yeah. It's quite graphic. It's quite yeah. like gory and really violent. Nice. Mm. I think it's on Paramount Plus. I think is where it is. Yeah, which it is. is yeah. I mean, who's who's bloody subscribed Same to that? Same with Twisted yeah. Metal's on Peacock. How do how do, yeah, how do we he, get that? Uh, not getting that. Um, but yeah. So when you compare it to where we were with like the Uber Bowl uh, directed horror pieces of the early 2000s mm -hmm. with God, what I can't even think of them. Blood Rain was one of them. Mm. Did he do a Silent Hill? He did the Resident Evil movies. He didn't do that, but was that not him? you know, still people quite enjoy those yeah. as, as schlocky as those are. But we've we've still come a long way, and it's only going to go uh, going to get better. I remember reading. In the the console wars book that I I read over like this summer and last summer, there was an extended bit about the Super Mario Bros. movie from the late eighties. Mm -hmm. Was it late eighties, early nineties? Yeah, yeah, late eighties, I think. That sort of time and how basically, the, like it cataloged the whole saga with that. But it sounded like Nintendo were were essentially just shown a screening of it, and they were like, "Oh God," <laughs> and that was it. Yeah, and so I find it very hard to believe that. Someone f like the uh, someone representing the IP holder is not going to be involved in some mm. capacity with with most things happening these days. Mm -hmm. But it is all about how much say they have, yeah, and how far that say goes. Yeah, um, The Witcher didn't really work out, but it is about the book. I think it? we'll find out when the Borderlands movie comes out oh how much God, so how so much excited. input that Randy Pitchford had I'm in that. So and I excited. hope I hope and pray it's so much. That was a magic trick. They wrapped yeah. last June, I think, and it comes out next year. Next August. Yeah. Something there's something really wrong with that film. They've had to reshoot so much. I they reshot wait. it, it's they changed be... director. They've probably rewritten a bunch I of think it. The writer had his name removed yeah. from the from the production. No, I think the original director did. Okay. I I can't wait because it's going to be, gonna be brilliant. awful and yeah. uh, I'm really excited to see it. Yeah. Anyway, so th there's your answer. <laughs> I hope that helps, uh, Dan. It's time to move on to something a little bit strange. That's true. A bit peculiar. A bit new. It's weird news. It's weird news time, time for some weird video game news. Remember, if you'd like to submit your weird video game news to us, you can do so on Facebook and Twitter with the relevant post that goes up on a Tuesday. <laughs> However, if you'd like to guarantee a shout out at this point in the podcast, you need to go to that patreon.com forward slash team triple jump, the place that we're promoting the hell out of. You should go there. You should go there. Great and news. Yes. There's a new person on there whose name we're not going to be able to pronounce. Oh, I... yeah. yes, you're right. Uh, and become a podcast producer and you'll get a shout out right here and you'll support us and we'll love you forever. Yeah. Just like G.Y. Goliath. Nicole Hansen. Duncan Wilson. Katie Garrett or Jared. Eric Siu. Okay. Yes. That's a good swing. Question yeah, mark. Uh, Melody L. Bonnet. Yes. Uh, Nexus Polaris. Gabrielle Philippink. And, and Blake, Blake Thomas. Thomas. I wanted that one. 
Thank you, podcast thank you, podcast producers. Thank you, podcast producers. And thank you, Eric. Welcome, Eric. Welcome, Eric, yeah. to the podcast. I think Eric was name. here last week. Oh. But I do think that maybe I spelled his name wrong. What? I think I put Eric Slew last week instead oh. of Slew. Oh. And then when I oh, went to like do it this L. week, I was like, oh. That's the wrong letter. Eric, sorry. Yeah. That's um, just part, if you want to have us no mispronounce better. your name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you need to sign up to be a podcast. Well, there's no producer. better this week. Like last week you spelled it wrong and we said it wrong. This week you spelled it right and we probably said it wrong yeah. anyway. So Eric, if you're in if you're in the comments or on do you want to put on your Patreon, let us know how to say your name correctly. See you. I'd guess See you. Eric's you. Yeah. See you. Yeah. How about next week we mispronounce everybody's name? Yeah. Except Eric's. Except Eric's. Well, we yeah. still don't know how to say Eric's, but yeah. potentially. Peter, have you got some weird news? Though? I've got some weird news here that was sent by Blake Thomas and Michael Milan, both on Facebook, I believe. Blake um, Thomas is a podcast producer. Mm. Yes. <laughs> and this is a uh, write-up from GameSpot.com. Um, or G-Spot, as I like to call yep, it. That the is what it is. Written by Stephen T. Wright. Um, the headline... Wrote. What is Stephen T. What did Stephen w T. Wright? W-R-I-G-H-T. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, what did Stephen Wright? Stephen Wright wrote, <laughs> Barack, Barack Obama <laughs> is a Captain Falcon main, apparently. Excellent. Subtitle. According to a recent Q&A with Super Smash Bros. N64 organizer... Comma. Former President Barack... <laughs> I thought that said... According to a recent Q&A with Super Smash Bros. N64 organizer, former President Barack Obama... <laughs> <laughs> uh, former President Barack Obama mains Captain Falcon in the original Smash. Mm. I mean, that's most of the article just in the subheading, but let's read it anyway. What's he up to these days? Yeah. The He's playing Smash. He's playing Smash. The original Super Smash Bros. for N64 might not be as famed as it is as its sequel, Melee, but it has a hardcore fan base all the same. One of those fans, Cody Daniels, got the chance to play a bit of Smash 64 with President Barack Obama as part of a Make-A-Wish in 2015. And he says the former Commander-in-Chief mains Captain Falcon. And what's more, he's not too shabby at the game either. Oh. Speaking to Smash community figure Tafo as part of a recent stream, Daniel said that he got to play Smash 64 with Obama at the White House. As part of the experience, he got a signed copy of the game as well as a special card protector coin. Do you think it's a signed copy of the game signed by Barack Obama? Not yeah, I assume of so, Smash yeah. Bros. Yeah, Barack not Obama. signed by anyone from Nintendo, but this is my <laughs> copy of <laughs> Smash Bros. signed by Barack Obama. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Unique. It's kind of a random make-a-wish, isn't it? Yeah, I like want to sometimes play Smash Bros with, with Barack the Obama. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it's like I'd like to meet John Cena or mm -hmm. something. But and he'll do it. And he'll yeah. be he'll there. Meet, he'll meet anyone. Yeah, he, he will. Loves it. He loves He's a great guy. Are you yeah. sure about that? Yes. yes. Daniels further said that Obama was significantly better at the game than he expected, especially compared to average casual players. Daniels is now an organizer in the Smash 64 scene, having hosted one of the largest house tournaments ever for the game. Besides Smash, he's perhaps best known as a poker player, recently winning $11,000 as part of a reality poker show, apparently. Don't need to know any of this. Obama. Uh, Obama. No, Daniels. That's what he does oh, okay. at this time. Obama doesn't need it. Um, this is actually the end of the article. It just talks about Daniels a bit more. Uh, he donated all of, his, all of his winnings to the Make-A-Wish Foundation in order to pay it forward and help someone else have an experience Aww, like cute. he did in 2015. For more on Daniel's work in the Smash 64 scene, check out the 64 Stories documentary on Operation Desert Smash. Um, <laughs> I was not sure where that, that yeah. sentence was no, going. It really was just... An the, advert. The, well, an advert. It really was just the one sentence bit of news. Someone played Smash Bros with... Obama and he prefers Captain Falcon. Brilliant. And is quite good. Still a good headline though. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Ashton. I have a news. It was submitted by Josh Lees on Facebook and at Snowboy Yanny04 and at Carl B underscore E R V B on Twitter as well. Nice. What? Uh, from Kotaku by Isaiah Colb Colbert or Colbert, depending on <laughs> where you're from. Who knows? Um, Baldur's Gate 3 voice actor says his job was to make sex sounds. The Baldur's Gate 3, the gift that keeps on giving. Mm. Um, then the subtitle, I don't really understand how to read, so I'm just going to read it as is. Larian Studios hit Alex Jordan's line to record himself kissing his hand while he made a bunch of breathy sex noises. Hang on, hang on. What? Where, where, where does that, the word Larian hit Studios hit Alex Jordan's line to record himself kissing his hand while he made a bunch of breathy sex noises. Hit Alex Jordan's? Yeah, how else do you read that? That's very confusing, isn't it? Unless it's like to hit, hit the line. But that's what? Alex Jordan's line Alex, to record Jordan. himself. 
That doesn't make sense. It just does doesn't it? work. No, then, does it? No. Not really, unless it. it's like hit my music or yeah. hit, hit that line. It's like it if it was like Larry and Studios's hit had Alex Jordan record himself kissing yeah, his hand while he but, they but that's like they not what they've written. Alex. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and right. then and then some there's in bold underneath it says, Thank you for your service with a salute emoji. Okay. Everyone's talking about Boulder Skate 3's sexy times, yes. be it with a giant red demon lady, a smarmy vampire, or a bear. Mm. What you might not have known about the fantasy role playing game is that Larry and Studios hired at least one voice actor to exclusively make sex sounds. Good. Voice actor Alex Jordan, who lent his voice to cartoons and video games like Atomic Heart, Lord of the Rings Gollum, and Demon Souls. He did the sex noises in Gollum. Oh, yeah. oh I love those. Bits. Revealed on his official TikTok page that his voice can be heard in Baldur's Gate 3 as well. Unlike his previous roles as cannon fodder villains and super sleuth detectives, Jordan's role in Baldur's Gate 3 was specifically to provide the party based RPG with a plethora of breathy sex sounds. At a studio that I've worked with a lot, they come to me and they say, do you want to voice act in Baldur's Gate 3? I said, of course I want to voice act in Baldur's Gate 3. Who doesn't want to voice act in Baldur's Gate 3? But it's a little bit close to release, isn't it? What's the role, Jordan said. They said, no, not a role. We've finished recording all that, all of that stuff, I'm afraid. No, what we need is sexy sounds. Do you want to come in and do the sexy sounds? Question mark. When asked if he wants to come in and do the sexy sounds, Jordan recalled saying, sure. Yes, I would like to come in yeah, and do the sexy, sexy sounds. sounds. What awaited Jordan was a very awkward recording session where he had to perform various oohs and ahs while kissing his hand a whole oh. lot in the booth. God. Apparently, Jordan's vocal efforts were greatly appreciated because developer Larry in Studios replied under his TikTok saying, and what sounds they are. Um, towards the end of his TikTok, Jordan asked the players to keep him in mind while they are gallivanting in <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3 and attempting to Riz up in its many romantic, romanceable. Riz up. Do you know what riz up. means? I know no. what riz means. <laughs> what does riz mean? Riz means like if you're like really smooth and like if you're really good at getting the opposite sex because you're so good at like smooth talk and chatting them up. That means way. you've got riz. Mm. You've got riz. Yeah. yeah. How many more things can it possibly be called? <laughs> and you can riz you can up. Say somewhere. that someone's riz is like you know off the, off chart. the chain. So the chart. it's similar to big dick energy. Mm, it's different. It's, it's yeah. subtler than that. I think. Yeah. Oh, it's like because just, anyone can have riz. Like it's just being it's being it's charismatic. Kind of je ne sais quoi. Yeah. Yeah. Riz. riz. Yeah. And you it can riz like someone up. It sounds like a word up. from the forties. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. It's, not, it's not very gentle. Sounds like a magazine yeah. that you shouldn't be reading. No. Yeah. Um. And then he said, "You think about that." Jordan said, "You mull that over as you run around, you horny little perverts, with your little perverted role plays." Of your <laughs> Whoa! You mull this, that over as you run around, you little horny perverts, with your little perverted role plays, you randy bastards. You think of me, is what Jordan said in his oh, TikTok. Okay. Wow. Uh, so yeah, he he was brought in to specifically make wet kissy sounds, wet noises, wet noises. Well, good for they him. Just, they should just get some ASMR girls in to record the female parts because yes, they're yes, so yes. good at that. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, they're like, once you listen to the mouth sounds, oh, disgusting. It's awful. POV, you get kissed by your girlfriend <laughs> on the ear. <laughs> on the ear. Now that's Riz. Yeah, yeah it is. I, is right on the eardrum. Yeah. Close enough, right? Uh, Jonathan Wong has my weird news, uh, which comes from Kotaku and Zach Sveisen. Fallout Deathclaw creator impressed, horrified by all the porn. <laughs> The Deathclaw is one of the most feared monsters in the Fallout video games. They are able to rip apart low-level or unprepared players in seconds with their long claws and powerful limbs. But did you know that a subset of Fallout players find the Deathclaws hot? Yeah. Sexy yeah. even? I did. It's Not surprising true. even a little bit. And one of they've got Riz and one yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And one of the creators behind the creatures shared their thoughts on all the Deathclaw porn floating around the seedier corners of the web. Released in 2008, we're going to learn about Fallout now. We're going to learn about Death Claws. Cool. Yep. Du, du, du. Bethesda artists Jonah Loeb and the late Adam Adamowicz, great name, worked together to create the new Death Claws that would go on to scare players in Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4, and Fallout 76. Well, they scared most players. Some had a very... What? Hang on. Feels like they should say while. Mm. Well, they scared most players. Some had a very different reaction to the monsters. Kataku, on August the 6th, 
An Instagram account dedicated to Fallout memes and jokes shared an image that made fun of all the Deathclaw porn that exists. The image was a screenshot of Bethesda asking for Deathclaw fan art and then oh. comically <laughs> reacting to the nasty images it received. And in the comments of this post, Loeb shared his thoughts on all the Deathclaw porn that is out there. And yes, there is a lot. Just know if you're go- if you go looking for it, all of it is NSFW. Oh, I've seen I want some. to. Fi- I'm going to find some more. I was once trying to do a thumbnail for a what culture video, mm-hmm. and I just typed in Deathclaw to Google Images, and it was like the sick result was just death claw ass brilliant yeah people love lizards don't they mm. as the creator of the death claw i've been silently impressed slash horrified at the sheer tonnage of death claw <laughs> porn out there commented Loeb. he later retweeted a response from a cursed fallout image Ooh. account that the artist follows the account draco death claw is a big fan of the creatures and shared the initial initial image so they felt responsible for getting Loeb involved the former bethesda artist confirmed that this account had absolutely something to do with the response uh, the Death Claws creator explains why people find it sexy is the subset of the next uh, the subheading. Okay. Mm-hmm. Next area. Do you want to find out? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I'm so trying Ashton to find just showed me board. an image that was not at all as NSFW as it gets. No, just that's sort of just, just a Death Claw girl. Yeah. Also, when I, I googled um, Death Claw sexy and so the first thing that came up was from Reddit, does anyone yeah. else think the Death Claws are sexy? Question mark? No. Yes. I mean, I don't, but fair play to you. Mm. And in an Instagram message to Kotaku, Loeb explained that he designed the Deathclaw to be beautiful and terrifying in a National Geographic sort of way. I gave it a hulking, long-armed physique, a toothy scowl and lion-like eyes that regarded the player, not with hate, but as if they were food, (laughs) said Loeb. There's a mod that you can add uh, boobies to the Deathclaw. Of course, yeah. But some people enjoy being looked at that way. It can be, dare I say, titillating. And if you pair that gaze with lion-like eyes and a hulking, although fit, body, well, (laughs) then I can see how that might uh, arouse your interest. This is a really long article Mm. about about this weird topic. Wow. What does it say? Well, barely concealed areolas there at the death claw. See? I have a see. I have no. a costume on. She's see, got... I have a costume on now. Give me some sweets and candy. Oh, oh. It must be. I it's think it's a Halloween, Halloween one. themed. Mm. Well, oh God, it gets worse. I'm. It? Oh my God! Oh my God! Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. Wow. There. As your manager, probably shouldn't be showing you that. There's, a, there's an well. <laughs> well Ashton, Adam, Peter Ashton showed you the sexy work. bowling pin thing that time. You remember? <laughs> Oh yeah, true. That, that was yeah. very weird. You did it first. Oh, yeah, it's I am true. not going to read any more of that because it goes on and on and on. But it feels like he's sort of just reveling in the attention yeah. and it's mm, really getting yeah. stuck. He's into like, now let me tell you about it. Yeah, and I gave it a long tail this. because it's a lizard, but also it might be a sexy tail. Yeah, what? phallic somehow <laughs> yeah. coming out the back. <laughs> That's my weird news. Let us never speak of it again. Mm. Yeah, it's so. time, everybody, for the big discussion. Mm. It's big discussion time, time for the big video game discussion that this week's comes to see of Richard Major. Hello, Bap. Hello. Hello. Rockstar Games have announced that they'll be re-releasing Red Dead Redemption, including Undead Nightmare, in a couple of weeks. It's going to be on PS4 and Switch and costs £39.99. People complain about remakes and remasters, but this is neither. I'm getting choked up. It's just a port, and it's £40. That is pretty outrageous, right? I don't know how much money they should be charging, but you can currently buy Red Dead Redemption 2 on Amazon brand new for £17. You can buy Red Dead Revolver on PS4 from the PlayStation Store for £7.19. What are your guys' thoughts on this? Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Thanks, Richard. Richard. Got a roll eight up here from Push Square and Kale Adam. I've put it in the smallest font. (laughs) Yes, that is a tiny font. I can barely read it. Take Two Interactive is a publishing parent company on a monolithic scale with assets in excess of 15 billion US dollars. It owns two major publishing labels itself, Rockstar Games and 2K, and brought in a net income after covering all operating expenses of more than $1 billion in 2023 alone. Mm. The year's not even finished yet. It shouldn't. Co- it should come as no surprise then that the company is insisting that slapping a fifty dollars slash forty pound price tag on Red Dead Redemption's PS4 port is commercially accurate. It says in quotes, "For a straight port, not a remaster. Did we mention that? No enhancements outside of text in additional languages, which you know is something. No sixty frames per second upgrade, enhanced assets, or resolution bo- boost. Nada, as far as we can tell." 
These kinds of things have largely become expected for re-releases in this day and age, and fans and players aren't having any of it. Speaking to, I speaking to IGN, Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick minced no words, declaring, that's just what we believe is the commercially accurate price for it. You would do. You're a millionaire. Billionaire, Billionaire, probably. It's a bold strategy, but the depressing truth is that people will likely buy it at that price point regardless. Such is the power of nostalgia and the mastery and allure of Rockstar Games. We take some comfort in the timing of this announcement, which just shows how entirely out of touch the powers that be are with the current sentiment of players on the ground. Can I tell you what players thought when I asked them on oh, YouTube? Please do. Would love to hear that. How many nasty words were there? Oh, Lots. Uh, and also I made a spelling error and people started pointing that out and that oh, made no. me feel oh, bad no. because I made the spelling error in the picture and not in the thing so I couldn't oh, fix yeah. it. Oh. Yeah. What so did you put? I, f I forgot the M in redemption. Redemption. <laughs> yeah, redemption. 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 I did it quickly before M. we were doing something yesterday and I just have missed the spelling error. Rep uh, redemption. Rep um, anyway, the community, shockingly, generally didn't like this. That's strange. Everyone thought it was a piss take and they were not happy about it. Um, people said that they would pay max... There was actually quite a lot of people said that they would pay maximum £20. Yeah, that seems it. fair. Um, some people were referring to the Switch tax, uh, given that every single game on Switch tends to be more expensive and never goes on sale. People would say, uh, is it too expensive? Yes. Am I going to buy it? Also, yes. Mm, Which, right. uh, man. That's it. There was a lot of people being Rockstar fanboys saying, well, it's a, it's a really good game, actually, so why <laughs> wouldn't was, you pay for it? In what, 2011? Yeah. 2010. Um, 2010? Yeah. 2010. Lots of comparisons to GTA V and Skyrim remasters in the sense of it just feels like, well, re-release, sorry, it just feels like people are asking for more money mm -hmm. for the same thing. Um, but yeah, the general consensus, shockingly, was that people did not agree with the price tag and for not even a graphical upgrade or 60 FPS were not happy about it. Mm. Um, apart from the Rockstar fanboys, I love that game. I'm probably going to pay for it again. Mm. Oh. Well, if it were cheaper... Maybe. It's mm. important to note that uh, this is not coming to Xbox because Xbox already has a very good backwards compatible situation with Red Dead Redemption because it's currently available in 4K on Series X and 1440p for Series S. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's the thing. I think if this was uh, a really nice remaster, not one made by AI Rockstar, where it's a <laughs> saloon in Comic Sans above the, yes. the swing doors, Yeah. Um, then maybe £40 would just be justifiable if it was a good remaster, you know, like mm. 60 FPS, 4K, really nice looking, maybe like uh, improvements in how it runs or whatever, because it is a beloved game and um, it has been... 13 years since it was first released. Unfortunately, it's not a remaster. It's just a port. Um, and yeah, I think it is too much. But what it comes down to is what you said in your write-up there, Ben, and what some people said in response to the community post, which is that some people will just pay this. And therefore, to play biggest devil's advocate, mm. why would they not charge that much if they know that people will just buy it? Mm -hmm. um, they're not going to do it out of the goodness of their heart and say, you know what, we should release this for free. We should do a 13-year anniversary release <laughs> and say, here you go, everyone. You can now play this for free digitally. I know no one's actually suggesting that they do that. But uh, yeah, they're obviously, they're, they're out to make money. They're a business. They're just going to charge what they think they can get away with. They've probably done a bit of like focus group stuff and tried to work out what people would pay for this. And sounds like a fair amount of people will pay £40 and you're silly for doing so, um, I would say. Mm. I mean, you make your own decisions, it's your money, but... People bought the trilogy. Yeah. After the overwhelming backlash, that trilogy made them a ton of money. Mm -hmm. The GTA trilogy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think it's it's silly to support that kind of price tag because it just encourages that behavior to continue. Like, oh, we'll just charge 40 quid then for the next thing we release as a port with no upgrades mm. well that's at the point uh someone said that they were going to buy it and someone said no you shouldn't buy it and they replied which might be my favorite comment i've ever read in my whole life what what difference is a handsome sausage like me buying it going to make <laughs> i was like a handsome love sausage. that guy i love this guy um but Maybe yeah if all the handsome sausages say that exactly if all the handsome sausages decide to buy this game yeah then like that's the point they're they're still gonna make money from it they're not gonna lose any money from it because really 
They've all they've had to do is make it work on Switch, which I mean, I'm not going to say it doesn't take that much effort, but it's also a, thir- a 13 year old game. So really, it's just a matter of oh, I don't know how to do ports, but you know, what I mean, press they're not the going to yeah, press the port button. They're not going to lose money on it. Realistically, no. they don't need this to sell as well as if they were to release a third Red Dead Redemption game. Mm. They don't need that. So realistically, they're just kind of doing it because they know they're going to make some money from it and they're not going to lose money from it. Mm. And unfortunately, it is people who are handsome sausages who decide that they are going to buy it because, oh, I love that game, best game ever. Um, Because they want it on a handheld device like the Switch, which is fair enough. But like you say, it's just too expensive. There's no reason for it to be £40. The port doesn't need to be that much money. If we're, we're already having issues with things like The Last of Us Part 2 being remastered and potentially being listed at 70 quid. This is the way things are, seem to keep going is that you can have a game and then still have to pay full price for that same game again somewhere else. Um, and it's just like, maybe he is right. Commercially... That makes sense because that's what everyone else is doing. If you can charge this amount of money for The Last of Us remaster, then why wouldn't you charge 40 quid for a poor? If if that's what we're going to do with our time, if that's where we can see the market going, why are they going to be like, well, we're not going to be chumps and give our game for cheap when everyone else seems to be spending their like full price on their games and people seem to be eating it up, mm-hmm. buying it. So... That's that's the real issue is that it's kind of a trickle down effect of one does it. So why don't we just all do it? Mm. If we can make money from these games that we've already listed before, then why not just do it again? Full price. The, the handsome sausage will buy it mm. and uh, and then we'll we'll make money. So I personally don't begrudge anyone who buys it because mm-hmm. if you really want it and you want the convenience of it on a on a modern ish system or as far as playstation goes then sure whatever it could be more expensive mm-hmm. it could also be a, a horrible remaster that barely functions yeah, Is that, yeah. It, it could be worse however for me personally i i think i side with the majority of people here where i think that that is far too expensive and it's you, what you're paying for is literally for the just the convenience of playing it on modern hardware, and that is not worth the price of admission to me. As amazing as that game is, th- let there be no doubt that it is a fantastic game. It's not worth that much today. It it, it just isn't, especially when it's backwards compatible on Xbox. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know how how could you possibly? Again, we don't know how much effort goes into porting a game like that, but truly, how much? Did, do they need to charge to make that money back and then make a profit? Given that a game that's made from scratch will sometimes release for 40 quid. Precisely. Yeah. I, I I just, I simply don't understand it. For me, it's the definition of a quick buck. Yeah. Mm. Because at least with the GTA trilogy, they had to have an entire studio go out of their way to mess that thing up. Yeah. And that would have cost money and taken time. And yeah. there was, you know, that was a huge PR disaster and rightfully so, far more than I would imagine this is. You know, it's not nearly on that scale. But this this is this is money for old rope. Like it's it's unthinkable that you would you would think it okay to charge for that amount. And personally, I find it unthinkable that you would be willing to pay for that. But if you want to and you really want to play it, maybe you've never played it before, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Go for it. But I I don't understand. I do not understand. And I think you're right, Ashton, when he's saying that it's the the most commercially accurate price for it, that's not them being super villain tyrants. That's them literally observing the state of the industry. Will yeah. People will yeah. pay for it. So it's commercially accurate because people will pay 40, yeah. 40 pounds for it. They will. Um, yeah, that so is that is the problem is that it is it is commercially accurate. What he's saying is not incorrect because we've seen it. We've talked about it. Well, we talked about it last week. Or was it last week or recently about The Last of Us Part Two? Yeah. We'll we'll talk about this until the end of time because it's just going to keep getting worse. Yeah, unfortunately, it's not um, it's not as simple as voting with your wallet, because realistically, as we've again, we've spoken about before. We're in this little gamer-centric bubble Mm -hmm. and we do not represent the vast majority of people who play games because the vast majority of people who play games do not listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. They don't read news stories. They see Red Dead Redemption going up and they go, ooh. Or they see The Last of Us Part 2 go up and they think, well, 
that's too expensive still. Maybe mm. I won't get that one. Mm. But the point is that these these people are unaccounted for. Like if if all of us sat at this table and said, right, we're going to vote with our wallets. We're not going to spend any money on this. That's not going to make any difference. What difference is a handsome sausage? What like difference is a handsome sausage yeah. not paying for this game? Exactly. So ultimately it comes down to how you feel about it and what you're most comfortable with. If you feel like not spending money on this makes you feel better about the situation, then that's what you should do. But realistically, a handsome sausage buying it and an equally handsome sausage not buying it isn't going to affect it either way. But that that is a bit of a defeatist mentality. Oh, it is. Uh, oh, it is. <laughs> consider I know. me defeatist. <laughs> because uh, the realistically, maybe... Maybe this time, yeah, it doesn't make that much difference because it's not a, it's not a huge mm -hmm. thing, this Red Dead Redemption port. But the next time something big does happen, that shouldn't turn you off from trying to make a conscious effort no. to not do something. Everyone should be trying to make a difference for what they think is right. That, that, yeah, exactly. That, that is true. However, in this instance, it's not going to make it's anything. not going to make a difference, and that sucks. But it's not. Do keep shouting about it and complaining online. Tell your friends. But not in a hateful way. Not in a hateful way. Don't do targeted Don't harassment. Don't be rude. But like if your friends are thinking about buying it and they're perhaps not as informed as you, maybe clue them in a bit. Mm. That's something you can do. Spread the word. Like this is a ripoff, right? You know, yeah. you shouldn't. Did you hear they're releasing Red Dead Redemption for 40 quid? What? The one from like on the PS3? Mm. Yeah, that one. What? That's stupid. I didn't know that, etc. Yeah. Do what you think is right. I think this is way too much. I agree. Yeah. I agree too. <laughs> well, let us know what you think about everything we've discussed today in the comments down below. And, uh, you know, do stand up for the things you believe in. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't mean to imply that you shouldn't. No. However, in this particular instance, they're going to sell it before you go. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Peter. Yes. There's some YouTubes and some Twitches. There are YouTubes and Twitches and we're on YouTube and Twitch. You can find us at youtube.com forward slash team triple jump and twitch.tv forward slash team triple jump. And uh, did you know that if you've got Amazon Prime, Part of the bundle that you are paying for includes a Twitch sub that you can spend on us. And if you don't have Amazon Prime and you're thinking about it, that's another benefit you can consider. It's not just that that cheap postage. Mm -hmm. You'll also be able to get a free sub if you pay for that. So. Twitter, Facebook, TikTok is all forward slash team triple jump on all those if you want to come and chat with us or chat with our community over there and submit weird news or anything. And also, if you want to join our Patreon, it's patreon.com forward slash team triple jump, like we've mentioned before. Absolutely. Triplejud.mup is our website. You can find links to everything that we do there. And why not leave a five-star review on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms and we'd really, really, really appreciate it. There's just enough time to talk about this week's sponsor once again, Peter. That's right. Hey, do you hate bored chimp uh, avatars? Profile pictures? Yeah, well, you should play Maddening NFT 24. It's out like next week or something, I think. Brilliant. Cool. Thank you for watching slash listening, everybody. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.